Hi everybody and welcome to Break for Science. Benjamin here. I have the great pleasure today to talk to Tomasz Saikowski about the origin of life. Hi there. He's a scientist currently at NASA Ames Research Center uh, and obtained his PhD uh, in Poland about prions and yes. is right now looking into the role of prions in the origin of life. And the early evolution mostly and right now. The early evolution. That sounds very exciting to me. Many of my listeners ask themselves, how did life evolve in the first place? What would be your personal answer in easy words? All right, so if we want to talk about origin of life, first we have to state that this is an unanswered question. This is a very old question that I refer to, where do we come from? But we have to understand that we don't have a single answer for it yet. But it is important to study this thing, in my opinion. So if the recent developments in the field will show that, describe a certain image, how we can at least conceive the origin of life. And it looks like it might be just a consequence of a physical laws that we experience every day. Uh, if I would have to make an, an example, let's imagine a river, a river full of Lego bricks floating in the water. And those Lego bricks will represent the smallest parts of organisms of which they are built. When uh, you imagine the river as a, source of, as a source of energy that is constantly flowing and uh, constantly supporting the energy to the system, then the Lego bricks floating in the water sometimes will bounce on each other and sometimes in the river there will be, for example, rocks that will cause those bricks to even harder stick to each other some, or hit to each other and sometimes stick to each other, forming higher order structures. So sometimes we'll have three or four or five blocks stick together and at some point they might even form more interesting structures that it's in a certain way that can actually have a function. And imagine, for example, that they just buzz by the random encounters and a random uh, binding of those blocks, you end up with a construction that actually helps to bring another bro blocks together. So it's, for example, is it can, can form a web or a funnel that will select a certain kind of the particles, the Lego blocks in this case, and at some point we can Im imagine a situation in which this Lego construct is self-replicating. It helps itself to obtain more blocks. It at some point breaks, for example, in two parts, but they both save the ability to bind to another. And this is how the first uh, higher order structure are starting to become, and if it become out of catalytical, as we call it, so they help itself to build another copies of itself. We don't say that we have already a biological system, but a chemical system that is already under the influence of evolution. We, there is a term called chemical evolution. So if I was to about to imagine an origin of life, it would be this system with a current, with a, with a constant energy flow in it, and the particles that uh, under influence of it will simply form higher order structures, obeying the thermodynamics law. And I really like this, uh, this analogy because actually uh, what are the basic demands for life? It's water, it's energy, and it's a kind of a randomness. So, and the, your river with, Le and I really like Lego, but your river with Lego stones is a perfect analogy for this assembly. So the river is playing Lego. A bit like, yes, we yeah. could say so. Uh, if we're thinking about the current proteins, they're built of amino acids and a modern protein is built of only 20 kinds of it. So in this river, we would only have to have a 20 
kind of Lego bricks, no more. So in a way, the process becomes even less complicated than we could assume at the beginning. And with 20 different type of Lego bricks, I can build a Death Star. So <laughs> that's <laughs> perfectly fine. After yeah. billions of years of evolution, we can end up with something so immensely complex as Life. bacterial cell or even a human, yeah. a thinking human. So with your analogy for Lego bricks, um, where did all of that start? Did, do you think that uh, it started in a pond next to a volcano? Or do you think it, it life was introduced via a meteorite? Or did it maybe start in a deep sea, uh, deep sea um, went? So what's your opinion about that? Yes, uh, all these possibilities that you mentioned uh, are described in literature. And uh, we don't really have enough data to decide right now. But the thing that really integrates all of these examples is this constant energy flow from the outside, like thermocontrol vents, there will be the vo volcanoes will be the source of the underground magma reservoirs will be the source of energy. If we imagine the warm pond on the surface of Earth, the source of ener constant energy would be the radiation from our sun. And uh, so I'm not really, a, I couldn't decide about any of this until we have more proofs, but if I have to be familiar with of a gut feeling is that a energy source from the sun radiating on, on the surface of Earth was always here and it, was, it is so abundant that maybe it would be more convincing. But as I said, we have to wait for more experiments and more uh, discoveries in this field. So the question remains exciting it is. and we can't answer it now. How is your personal research related to uh, Origin of Life and what are these prions you're working with? That's right. The prions cause a lot of confusion because they're usually uh, associated with uh, diseases. But what was found in the last years is actually that prions doesn't have to be a toxic entity. They can form structures that can be used for itself in physiological processes because prions are actually an aggregate of proteins. So, so prions is an uh, assembly or an aggregate of multiple proteins? Of multiple proteins, okay. it is. And then it helps to, um, it can help to gather more proteins together or it can also help to gather other molecules together? It helps to get more proteins or, or peptides or shorter proteins together of the certain type. It, this process is select. So the most popular theory in the origin of life is so-called RNA word. RNA is supposed to have, and it is discovered to have both ability to form a structure and to have a uh, enzymatic function. So it can help itself potentially to build another copy of itself. But the problem with the RNA word is that the nucleic acids that are the building blocks of RNA or DNA are not very stable in the conditions that we predict to be on the early Earth. It was very hot, a lot of radiation, and in this condition, compounds like RNA or DNA are not stable, as stable as, as proteins could be. So not long time ago, uh, more and more studies starts to um, demonstrate how proteins could actually take place of RNA or DNA at the very beginnings of formation of auto-replication capable systems like the prions that we described in a few seconds before. Cool, cool. With that said, what was for you like, like the most interesting or most changing publication in the last few years in this field? I must say that the uh, realization that uh, pop peptides, short peptides that uh, constitute only a few amino acids, while for the uh, example, the uh, modern proteins are constructed from hundreds of those little bricks. Uh, it actually was shown that only few of them is enough to interact with each other and to just copying and sticking together uh, form a structure that is long enough to have 
and other functions like enzymatic functions and for example help to construct itself even farther. Tomasz, thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Great that uh, you joined in for, for this session of Breakthrough Science. And uh, to all of you, thanks for joining in and see you for the next video. Stay curious and stay patient.